Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to another Hazel Devlog. And Happy New Year. It's uh, 13th of January. It's like halfway through the month. I finally dragged myself out of bed. Finally here making another video for you guys. It's been, it's been rough. Coming back from holidays is always like the worst. But I do have some extremely exciting news today. This is gonna be one entertaining devlog, hopefully, because the features are just, they're just flying into Hazel. But this time, it's not just me that you have to thank. So over the last year, really, the community for Hazel has really grown quite a lot. And there are a lot of people interested in contributing to Hazel Dev, which is amazing. Now, whilst we're not quite hiring full-time engineers to work on Hazel just yet, some people have been extremely generous with their help on Hazel Dev and it's gotten to the point where I've even formed a little bit of like a Hazel core team and we work on, on Hazel. Peter1745 is the person to thank today. I want to give a huge shout out to Peter1745. This is his username on Discord. I don't even know what his full name is. He is the person who has made possible what we're about to look at today, which is 3D physics in Hazel. That's right, starting the year off with 3D physics. Pretty cool. So Hazel Dev has had 2D physics for a while using Box2D, something I added a few months ago, but obviously it was it, it's, it's desirable to have 3D physics in a 3D game engine because whilst 2D physics is nice and you know you can still render stuff in 3D but have 2D physics, overall you probably want to have some kind of 3D physics solution. Now this is something that uh, I was kind of putting off for a while because it wasn't strictly necessary. I wanted to get kind of the fundamentals done and like 2D physics, but then Peter showed up and was like, hey man, I I want to slap PhysX, NVIDIA PhysX into Hazel, so can I do that? And I was like, absolutely. So here we are today. <laughs> now, one thing I want to point out is that, um, again, me and Peter have worked have worked uh, quite a bit on this feature. It's, there's been a lot of back and forth. It's been really like like having a development team, which I'm really grateful for because as a solo developer, it's really nice when I get to speak to people. But overall, Peter, as if he needs more like cool points, the reason why Peter stands out to me is because I've I've had a lot of people from the community come and, and understandably, you know, contribute code that that isn't like that great or like, you know, it's fine for like an open source community because, you know, when you have the community contributing code, the standard of code is typically lower than you would find in like a professional team, understandably, because experienced engineers are probably spending their time, you know, doing paid work. But every now and then someone comes along and writes code and, 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 and works on a feature at a professional level to the point where like, if the person was actually employed by me as like a full-time engineer on Hazel, I would be satisfied with their work. And I think Peter is is one of one of one of those people. The game engine series of Hazel ha has always been something that like it's more of an ed educational series. I'm more okay with people kind of taking that and doing doing stuff to it that I maybe wouldn't necessarily agree with. I still see myself as like the kind of technical director of that project, but it's more of like a community involvement thing. Whereas Hazel Dev is kind of like my baby. Hazel Dev is like my engine that I'm secretly making behind the scenes to to both know what to teach in the game engine series, but then also to eventually, you know, develop my own games in and to serve as like an educational resource to people who want to go a little bit past the game engine series and get into the more serious stuff. So because of that, I'm way more picky with the kind of code that I end up accepting because in a lot of cases, it just makes more sense for me to write the code because it's like my engine, if, if that makes sense. So anyway, long story short, Peter has done some absolutely amazing work and we now have PhysX inside Hazel. Now there are a lot of, a lot more things that I'm still working on, like integrating it with C-Sharp scripting a little bit better and adding more features in general. Like, you know, NVIDIA PhysX is a huge library. There's a lot of really nice examples out there. It's very straightforward, easy to use. 3D physics library, I think it's very powerful. It's definitely the solution I would pick over something like Bullet. It's a really nice 3D physics library and it's definitely my top choice for Hazel. So what can we now do? Well, <laughs> I mean, what can't we do? I feel like with 3D physics inside Hazel now, you know, we've got 2D physics, we've got 3D physics, we've got like, you know, a full editor where you can like move things around and enter play mode. We've got C-sharp scripting. Like you could definitely put together some game in inside Hazel and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna do that. I'm not gonna talk too much about that in this video because of course I wanna reserve this video for 3D physics, but in the future, very soon probably, I'll be putting out a video talking about what my goals are for this year and making something is definitely one of my primary goals for this year because I think that Hazel is definitely getting to the point where we can actually start driving Hazel's features by having an actual project 
rather than still kind of messing around with a sandbox, which is a really exciting stage to be in in the life of a game engine. Anyway, without further ado, I know you guys want to see the physics. I'm going to show you like a building a scene from the ground up, adding some physics objects, kind of the whole workflow. I've been refining the workflow a little bit, making sure everything works over the last couple of days. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting stuff. Now, whilst it's it's kind of mostly, I would say mostly working, there's still a, a, a wide variety of like edge cases and like other optimization issues and stuff that we have to sort out. So it's, for now, it's in a separate branch called PhysX inside the Hazel Dev repository. For those of you who have access to that, who are patrons, you can uh, you can clone the branch and take a look at it for yourself. One of the coolest things about Hazel Dev, I think, is the rapid development of features. I mean, sure, the features aren't like fully QA tested and production ready, but I, I think the pace at which we're able to kind of produce these features is really, really cool. And I think that the best feedback I receive from a lot of people who do have access to this stuff is just how as soon as they're done playing with one feature, something else just comes up. So that kind of stuff makes me really happy. And that's something that I appreciate working on a small scale project like Hazel rather than something else, like some large game engine in the industry. Anyway, let's finally take a look at the physics. Okay, so I've got this fairly empty scene here. All I've done is added a camera directional light and a skylight just so that we can actually see something. So if I play the scene, obviously we just have an empty scene. Let's go ahead and set up some 3D physics. So if you right click and go to create, I've added some more options here to be able to just quickly make things so that you don't have to add empty entities and then start adding a whole bunch of components. So we have some meshes here, but then we also have physics. I'll walk you through the, the kind of basic way to add physics stuff without just using the presets though. So if we just spawn in like a little cube, here's our little cube, looks great. Let's scale it up a little bit so we can see it. And then maybe let's uh, duplicate the cube, drag it down a bit, and I'm gonna make like a little floor plane out of it. So I'll just maybe shrink it down. Uh, that looks pretty good, I think. Maybe let's move this cube up a bit, make it smaller. Okay, so now what I wanna do is actually simulate some physics. So if I hit the play button, we of course just see the geometry as you would expect, nothing too fancy. Let's see if we can make this cube fall and well crash onto the ground. So if I click on the cube and I go add component, I can add a rigid body. Now I'll set this to be dynamic because we want it to actually move, not just for other bodies to collide with it. There's a whole bunch of settings here and constraints and stuff like that that you can play around with as well. And then I'll add a box collider. So this box collider, which shows up in green like this, represents the actual PhysX collider. So this is, this is the part that's actually going to collide with things. Now you can resize it. As you can see, I can play around with these settings uh, and it's possible to make something that doesn't align with the geometry. But by default, because this is a one meter cubed kind of cube, so one by one by one meter, uh, and this is one by one by one, they match up, right? And if you scale it up, obviously, or you play with the scale, that's also going to match as well. So let's set this back to, uh, well, we don't have to have it like as a uh, perfectly uniform cube but we've basically created an object with a box collider. Um, also, the shadows seem to disappear when I select things. I forgot to fix that before the video, that's awkward. But anyway, we'll keep going. So if I select this, and it only, and it only seems to happen when we select uh, things with actual um, you know, collision geometry, which is weird. But anyway, so if I select this, um, and I, well, first of all, let's just hit play, right? So now it falls, brilliant. But let's make it collide with this. So we'll go ahead and go to add components and then we'll add a rigid body. We'll make it static though. And then we'll also add a box collider. So really all we need for these things are box colliders. We don't have to like deal with meshes and mesh colliders. We'll explore that a little bit later today. But for now, this is really all we need. If I hit play, now our cube is here, right? And it collides, amazing. Let's uh, drag this up. This is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. I would be, I would act more amazed, but I have been like, working with this kind of stuff for like the last few weeks. So to be honest, I'm almost a little bit sick of it. But anyway, let's uh, run this little simulation here. Looks pretty good. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new uh, mesh or a new physics sphere. So now we have the same thing, but this is like an actual sphere. Let's drag it up, scale it up maybe. What I'll do is I'll actually come over here to the materials panel and I'll add something. I'll add some albedo to this. So if we go assets, uh, I don't know, I'll just go to like meshes, maybe we'll use the Cerberus texture. Um, also I'll check that as use and maybe I'll make it like plastic just so that we can actually see it roll. Um, and so if I hit play here, then the, uh, whoops, we forgot to add a, to make this dynamic. And if we hit play here, there we go. So that was a bit, uh, not as fun as I thought it would be. Uh, maybe let's try again. <laughs> it's just landing on that cube perfectly. 
Let's try a different angle. Yeah, okay. We can always add more spheres and have them collide with each other. Okay, and then you can see the sphere is rolling. Okay, so that is some basic 3D physics. This of course is pretty cool, but it, it can get a whole lot cooler if you actually have like some kind of world or some terrain that you want to collide with. So let's quickly go into Blender and I'm just going to make a brand new mesh here. We'll make a new cube. Maybe I'll uh, scale this up kind of like this. And what I want to do with this is actually just make like some terrain, honestly. Now let's make sure the scale isn't negative because that would be annoying. Uh, let's drag this maybe down a little bit. I'm gonna go into edit mode. This isn't really a Blender tutorial, but what I'm gonna do is just basically tessellate this a lot. I'm gonna make a whole bunch more vertices uh, pretty much everywhere um, on this kind of surface. So that should, be, that should be okay. And I'm just going to manipulate some of them by using like a little soft selection here, which sometimes doesn't, the shortcut doesn't work for some reason. Okay, and now we're able to just kind of create some nice terrain, right? So I'll just uh, maybe Drag this up, make some kind of hills here. Maybe I will make like in the middle, I'll make like a little recessed kind of dip here. And then maybe I'll even make some kind of uh, river here or something. It's almost like a little dip, uh, like a little platform that's just recessed there. Okay, that should be enough. Let's make sure we shade this smooth. Uh, and then you know, if I really wanted to, I could probably go to the modifiers and add like a subdivision surface modifier. Maybe let's just do one. We'll see what that looks like. And then if we apply that, I'm just kind of concerned. Okay, that's not too bad. So we have about, about like 3,866 vertices according to that. So that should be okay. Cause obviously with physics meshes, you don't want to make them too detailed. Otherwise your performance will suffer. That looks pretty good. I almost liked it better without the subdivision, but we'll keep that just to demonstrate a high quality mesh. Okay, so I'll go file export FBX. And then if we go ahead and go to our little physics demo folder that I prepared earlier, let's go ahead and uh, physics mesh this. Uh, I'll set the scale to 0 0.01 just so that we convert to meters and then I'll export the FBX. Okay, so now let's, let's kind of delete this thing. And instead what we'll do is we'll add an empty mesh and then we'll go ahead and load that. So if I go over here to our folder, I'll load the FBX file. Here it is, as you can see, it looks completely wrong. Let's go back. Probably would have been a good idea to actually apply the transformation before I started messing with all the vertices, but maybe we can save it if I go to wireframe and just recalculate the normals. And there we go. Let's let's try and re-export that. There we go, a real life devlog and you can see me mess up. <laughs> let's go ahead and I already deleted it and add that empty mesh back in. Okay, looks pretty good to me. So um, let's go ahead and uh, maybe not make it um, like a shiny plastic. Let's make it more rough and maybe I'll even make it a kind of green color just like that so that it's more of like a terrain color. Uh, and then I can just go to add component and then, uh, well, we'll add our rigid body, but then we'll add a mesh collider instead of a, instead of a box collider. So if I add a mesh collider, this will actually generate a mesh collider with physics and you can see that it looks pretty good. So now, technically speaking, if I was to like drag this here onto this, onto this mountain, it should just roll off the mountain when I hit play. And there you go, right? So we have an actual mesh collider. Uh, let's go ahead and scale this up maybe a little bit and we can move this around so that our world gets larger. I'm not sure if that'll be fully captured by the camera. So maybe let's move the camera back a bit more. Maybe I'll set the field of view a little bit wider. Okay, and there you can see our little physics simulation looking pretty good. So let's make that roll off that mountain. That looks good, I think. Okay, so that is an example of these mesh colliders being used. Now it's not very difficult to then take this and uh, obviously add like a little capsule collider and an actual FPS camera so that we can actually move around this terrain and jump around and we'll collide with everything. So that's probably something that I will in fact save for the next devlog. But I think this should give you a pretty decent idea 
of the kind of stuff that is now possible. Okay, so as I mentioned, loads of stuff that we can still show here, but that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what you thought of this and what you thought of the workflow and just your general thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget that you can help support the development of this as well as get access to everything that you've seen here today by going to patreon.com slash the channel. Huge thank you to everyone who does help support the series. We wouldn't be here without you. Hazel would not be at the stage that it is at if it wasn't for you guys and your support. I think that where we've come so far, even though to me this still, still seems like the absolute beginning of a game engine, it's really quite incredible and I think that we as a community have something to be proud of because I don't think a lot of people can can say that they've managed to build something like this and we have. So I'm really, really proud of this community and of all of you guys for all of your contributions and for even watching my videos and supporting and everything like that. You know, um, I think I had a lot of time to reflect over the holidays, over this kind of few weeks that I had off from making YouTube videos and I really am so grateful for the community and to be in the position that I'm I'm in and I'm so so excited for the future because this is this is like honestly the absolute beginning. My new year's resolution for this year is to work harder and hopefully I'm gonna be able to prove that with Hazel and with this channel and with everything that I do. So strap yourselves in. It's gonna be a wild ride. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>